entertain those questions, inshallah, because if you've got any question, write them down. Or if you want to unmute yourself and talk, no problem. Everything good, inshallah. Khair. The ruling of fasting, we spoke about this one last time. The essential elements of fast that we're going to speak about, inshallah, today. Uh, the intention, the essential element of fast. So the element of fast, which means the, the wajibat of fasting. Yeah, which means that what do you need in order for your fast to be accepted? What do you need in order for your fast to be uh, accepted? Therefore, let's see if we have uh, a brother who anyone who would have volunteered to read. Yeah. Oh, Adil Almas. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Yalla, Tfadal. The essential elements of fasting. There are two essential elements of your fast to be valid and accepted. They are one is the intention. You must have the intention of to fast before Fajr every night during the month of Ramadan. The intention does not need to be spoken because in reality, it is an act of the heart that which does not involve the tongue. It will be full, fulfilled by one's intention from the heart of heart to fast out of obedience of Allah, seeking his pleasure, abstaining from acts that nullify the fast. The second essential element for your fast is to be accepted is that you abstain from the act that nullify the fast from dawn to sunset. If you maintain these two essential elements during fasting, then your fast will be valid and accepted. All right. Two conditions for your fast to be accepted. Only two. Yeah. First of all, intention. Like how I spoke today in the clip that I sent today on YouTube. How we intention for the Siyam. And I hope that everyone has watched it. Uh, how do we make intention for Siyam? There's no dua to be made. Just your intention is very important. Number one. And number two is that you abstain from food and drink and satisfaction of your biological needs from Fajr till Maghrib. So the first one is intention. Number two is that you abstain from food and drink from Fajr until Maghrib. That's the only two conditions. All right, easy to remember. Number one is intention. And number two is to abstain from whatever Nullify the fast from Fajr until Maghrib. All right. This is something, well, we know the essential is called the, 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 the pillar, the rukun, or you could say the, the condition of fasting. The sunnah of fasting. What is the sunnah of fasting? What we'd like to speak about in the Nata'ala. Carry on, Adil. The sunnah of fasting. One, it is a sunnah if someone insults you to respond in a better manner and saying, I am fasting because of the report narrated by Bukhari and Muslim from the Abu Huraira. May Allah be peace upon him. That the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Fasting is a shield or protect so that so there should be no absence of offensive talk or behavior. If a person fight him or insult him, let him say, I am fasting. Toys. By the one in whose, whose hand is my soul, the smell coming from the mouth of fasting person is better before Allah than the fragrance of musk. musk. Allah says, he gives up his food, drink and desire for my sake. Fasting is for me and I will reward for it. And a good deed receive the reward of ten like it. Bukhari number 18094 Muslim We spoke about that one that when someone this is the sunnah of fasting. Like if ever someone insults you, what do you say in Nisa'im? In Nisa'im, which means I am fasting, I am fasting. Now, for example, you find abusive language, you find people to speak to you in a way in a way that's not supposed to be spoken. Therefore, when it comes to Ramadan, when it comes to Ramadan. If anyone abused you, what you need to say is Allahumma inni sa'im. When you say Allahumma inni sa'im, which means like, oh, verily, I am fasting, it put a shield between you and the act of shaitan. It put a shield between you and the act of shaitan. Oh, verily, uh, 
fasting is a shield of protection. Yeah, you wouldn't find anyone who's fasting and then he still swears. It's very hard to find someone fast and then he still curse and use bad words to others. That means these kind of people, Allah is not in need of their, Allah is not in need of their abstaining of food and drink. These kind of people, they can just go and eat and drink because fasting is not only about abstaining from food and drink. Fasting is about staying away from food and drink and foul languages, staying away from ghibah, staying away from namima, staying away from fahish al badi, about staying away, staying away from bad talk, making fun of others, looking down upon others, falling into haram, doing things, looking at haram, listening to haram, all these. When you say you're fasting, your eyes has to fast, your mouth to fast, even your ears fast, as it is said by Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhuma, when he said, for oh, verily, don't let the day of Ramadan and the day outside of Ramadan same. Let the day of Ramadan be different from the day outside of Ramadan. Let your eyes fast. Let your ears fast. The same way your mouth is fasting. Uh, all the desire that you wish, these are the things that need to stop in order not to please the shaitan, but to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. All right. Carry on, Adin. Number two. Is it a sunnah for the fasting person to eat suhoor? Because it was proven by al Sahiha that Anas ibn Malik him, said, the Prophet and Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, eat suhoor for in suhoor there is blessing. Right by Al-Bukhari. Okay. For verily, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Tasaharu fa inna fi suhoori barakah. You know, uh, we have a habit nowadays that oh, we get so lazy to get up for suhoor. Man, we can we can get up for Salat Al-Fajr, no problem. But when it comes to suhoor, I don't know, man. Even this about food. I mean, that laziness is there. You feel like, I'm not going to take suhoor. And guess what? Once Adhan is over, you're like, oh my days, I should have had suhoor. You know, now you start feeling thirsty. You start feeling, you know, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Take the suhoor, for verily there is barakah in the suhoor. Wallahi, if you take only a date, the Nabi Sallallahu said, take suhoor even if it is a date. Wow, it has a big effect in your day. Subhanallah. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, take suhoor even though it is a glass of water. It does have an effect. For example, if you take uh, if you take uh, suhoor with a date or water one day, uh, and if it look at your day, and if you take suhoor without anything, you don't wake up for suhoor. Check your day. You see, when it comes to suhoor, when it comes to suhoor, you may eat whatever you want. It doesn't have to be only date and water, like some people believe. It is sunnah to put date and water part of your suhoor. Yeah, you, you can eat whatever you want, but make sure you have a date in there. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam telling you have only a date for and water for suhoor. La. Eat whatever you want. Biryani, kapsa, kheb, Nutella, whatever. With, uh, you know what I'm saying? Parata. But at the same, at the end, make sure you have uh, make sure you have a date. Finish it with a date and a glass of water. You can have your tea, whatever, but make sure there's a date in there. Why? Because this is the sunnah of the Prophet. And guess what? Did you know that while eating suhoor, while eating suhoor, Allah and the angels are sending peace and blessing upon you. SubhanAllah. While, while taking suhoor, uh, Allah and the, and, the, and the angels are sending peace and blessing upon you. The Nabi said, In Allah malaikatahu, yisalluna ala al-mutasahirin. For verily Allah 
and the angels, they send peace and blessing and forgiveness upon those who are eating the suhoor. Allahu Akbar. Imagine you are having your food in the morning. One minute, five minutes, ten minutes, whatever you're having. While you are eating, Allah and the angels are sending peace and blessing upon you. Allahu Akbar. Why do we miss this meal? Why do we miss it? So don't miss it. It's good to have something in the morning because this is a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't be like those people, they eat at 12 o'clock and then they go to bed and then they wake up for Fajr, they pray, or they don't even wake up for Fajr, they wake up seven o'clock for their work. It's sad. No worries. Or what you can do is, what you can do is get a cup of water next to your bed or a date. You know, just get up five minutes before, have a cup of water and a date and go back to bed and wake up for salado. Yeah, don't be like, don't, don't go, don't go then the missile salad like Sheikh said you can do that and then you miss your salah. No, Allah. Your salah is going to be there. We're not talking about salah. This has to be there regardless. We're talking about that. The suhoor. Therefore, take it. We don't have much suhoor left. Maybe 15 left. So make 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 good uh, make good cause of it. Imagine you are making siyam. Allah is sending peace and blessing upon you. You are making siyam. Allah is removing you from the hellfire. And while you are eating to make the siyam, Allah and the angel is sending peace and blessing upon you. Allah Akbar. And when you're making iftar, Allah Azza wa is removing people from hellfire. So Ramadan. 24-7 is ibadah. Subhanallah. Oh, no, 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 no. You see? It's going to go. It's not going to stay for long. So let's make, the bo let's make the most of it. Don't just say it's sunnah. But it's good to wake up in the morning and have something to eat, isn't it? Or maybe some people, they don't like to wake up and prepare. I know some people have to wake up in the morning and prepare. It's some of the culture. Well, I, I know probably the uh, I know probably the 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 mothers nowadays might not be able to might might not do it, you know the maybe like like nowadays if you look at our our mothers and our our grandfather grandmothers and we're gone there and all, they would wake up in the morning like you know like three thirty wake up do the bread do the whatever, yeah they're ready to do it. With love and patience, they do it, mashallah. They don't have to do it, but they were doing it. But today's, today's generation, if you tell a sister nowadays, like who, 25 years old or 30 years old, to go and, you know, to go and uh, wake up 3.30 to do a suhoor, they, they're not going to do it. Yeah? I know what I'm talking, no worries. She's not here. No one can hear me. So anyway, this is, this is nowadays. So it's changed, but that doesn't mean that... Uh, it shouldn't be doing it. So anyway, suhoor is a way of uh, getting yourself something to eat. Yeah, but back in the days, because they used to think, back in the day, they used to think that suhoor was something fard. They used to take, they used to put importance of the suhoor. They wake up, cook, make sure. Some people back in the days, they would think if you don't make suhoor, your, your, your siyam is not accepted. Ah, but nowadays, you know, a sheikh like us now, we go tell people, no, you don't need to make suhoor, it's sunnah, which is true. But now, guess what? People don't make suhoor. Oh, it's only sunnah. Why? Because sheikh Ayyad says it. And then during the day, they start falling, falling unconscious. They start vomiting. No, 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 take it. Take your suhoor, my brothers and sisters. It's good for yourself. Yeah? And that one, let's read this one. Uh, Sheikh, we didn't discuss the third point, right? Which point, my brother? Third point, which is third point, what is third point? That, no problem, one point is missing. It's okay, no problem. Okay. okay. Where, the where? Fourth where, where? Um, okay, okay. Where, where, <laughs> what's missing? Here's number three. No, no, it was four before. 
Yeah, I just changed it. It's okay. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, the third, third one. It is sunnah to fast and to break the fast because because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the people will continue to be fine so long as they fast and to break the fast. Hey, uh, yes. You will be fine. You will be in good health as long as you hasten to break the fast. Brothers and sisters out there, don't think that you're too pious that you are delaying the, the fast. You know, some people, you know, subhanAllah, uh, when it comes to breaking the fast, what they're doing? I mean, they're still in the kitchen, they're still taking a shower, now they're waking up, and the adhan of Maghrib is going on. No. That, these kind of people, let me tell you, these kind of people, sorry if I'm, maybe I could be from them, maybe I am part of them, maybe you are from them as well, that they, you know, when it comes to breaking of the fast, it should be something that you're waiting for. Not waiting to break the fast, like waiting at that moment. It is a joy that you get that you don't get that any other time except before breaking the fast. Remember that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Lissa'imin farhatan. For the people who break their fast, they are happy twice. When are they happy? Before they break their fast and when they meet Allah Azza wa Jal. Before they break their fast, and he SubhanAllah, I mean, the whole day, I mean, wherever you are, maybe you're in the UK, you are in France, you're in Canada, you're wherever. You know, you've been fasting for like, what? Well, 15 hours, 16 hours, whatever. But it's, it's come time on the table for you to break your fast. That's the time you make your dua and your dua are accepted. Allah, you, you know, when, you're, when your tongue is dry, your throat is dry, and you raise your hand with humility, you ask Allah Azza wa Jal. At that moment, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah remove people who are distinct to hell, Allah remove them from hellfire. Why do we deprive ourselves from this time? And then some, some people, they are in the kitchen at that moment, and then they're still cooking at that moment. Maybe the husband or other, or at the table, but the wife is in the kitchen. But no, I think both husband and wife has to help in each other, has to help each other, get the kids together, make sure everything 10 to 15 minutes or 10 minutes before and then everyone at the table and then just are ready to, to make the iftar together. This is how we do it. Make the dua together because the mothers and the wives and whoever they are, even the maid, Whoever they are, they deserve a time before iftar to make dua. So we need to help out. And we need to make sure that they get the chance as well of being uh, at the table to make dua before iftar. And then once the adhan goes on, they just put a date in their mouth and they've broken their fast. This is the sunnah way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Very good. So we will go. All right, let me just change this before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The fourth one. It is sunnah to break the fast with the fresh dates. If none are available with the, with the dry with the dry dates. If one are available with the, then with water, with what available then with water. Because of the hadith of Anas, who said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa used to bake his fast with the fresh dates before praying. If there were no fresh dates, then with the dried dates. If there's no dried dates, then, then we with the, with take a few sip of water. Okay. Now look, that's an advice to myself and advice to the brothers and sisters out there. Cheers. Yeah. The whole day we've been fasting, you want me to break the fast with only a date and water? Sad. Did you see that? It's, uh, it's hard. But let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters out there. 
The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to break his fast with fresh dates. Fresh dates. As in, we don't have fresh dates. But if that wouldn't be there, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would use normal dates, dry dates, the one we have now in the market for soon. If that wouldn't be there, then he would take a few sips of water. And then, what would he do? Ah, oh. so now let's compare ourselves to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, Yahuan, I'm, I'm speaking reality, yeah? So what I'm saying, when I'm talking about something, something either that I see, or I do it myself. May Allah Azza wa Jal uh, forgive us. But let me tell you something. We know that we haven't been eaten for the whole day. We haven't been eating the whole day. Our digestive system has been dormant. Our stomach size has shrunk a little bit. But the problem is when it comes to iftar, the thing that comes big is our eyes. Hmm. They're like, oh, that's it? Like, oh my, I'm going to finish all this food right now. You got, you got all the food on the table. Your eyes tell you, your eyes, not your stomach. Your eyes tell you, listen, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to eat this. I'm going to eat that. And then when you break your fast, you ate nothing. So if you really want to eat all these, be like the Prophet Muhammad send them. Your body was fasting the whole day. Right? And it's time to break the fast, put a date in there. The best fruit on the face of the earth that has most calories is the date. Allahu Akbar. Whew. The fruit that has most calories on the face of the earth is date. And guess what? We get that fruit in the summer. Guess what? We get that fruit in the middle of the desert. So now it tells you how much minerals, ingredients Allah has put in there. I mean, for you to be traveling in the desert and then you see a palm tree or a date tree, you pluck some date and you eat. It gives you energy. We're not talking about apple or mangoes here. We're not talking about, about, about banana. We're talking about the dates. Even when Maryam والسلام, was delivering Isa, والسلام, what did Allah tell Maryam? Allah told him to shake the tree. To saqit alayki rutaban janiyya. While she was in pain, Allah told her to shake the tree so that the, the, the date will fall, you can eat from it. Why? Imagine when someone is delivering, they become weak. It's force, it's energy consuming. Someone is removing a baby, delivering a baby. But Allah has asked her to eat what? Dates. It brings back energy. For now, the Prophet is saying to eat dates. He was eating dates. And I know people who lived in Mecca for the whole of Ramadan with only Zamzam water and dates. Only Zamzam water and dates. And Allah Azza give them and they even become chubby. Ooh. Subhanallah. But this is the, the, the mu'jizah, the dates what Allah has made. The mineral Allah has put in the dates. But what we do is break our fast with the dates, with water, and, and I know that Samusa is looking at you over there, so. you know that Pakora is looking at you on the table, right? <laughs> you know, you're, you're trying to be like, you're, you're trying to do the sunnah, right? You're trying to do the sunnah, eating only dates and water, but someone has passed by, they've put that, that Samusa, you know, that that thing that, that that pig that's looking at you, and you know, that Leban is looking at you, that Pakora is looking at you, you know, 
You're like, oh no, okay, only one samosa. It's okay, have only have one or two samosa. It's fine, no problem. But make sure that you don't miss the salat al maghrib. <laughs> but don't overeat. You know, when it comes to iftar camp, do not overeat because it is not good for your health. Like how I said, your tummy has shrink. And then when you eat a lot of food in there, then you start feeling bloated. Yeah, and one thing I would like to advise is to stay away from carb when you break your fast. Carbohydrates, like bread and rice, stuff like that. Because, you know, eating bread and rice, it does not digest very quickly. You know, bread and, and rice does not digest very quickly. It digests from your mouth, but when it goes in, it does not digest quickly. So the thing that you may have is keep it fruits, keep it salad, it just goes in, it digests. Then later on, you may have some, some rice and something, and don't stop yourself when it comes to Ramadan. Eat a little bit after Maghrib, and then eat a little bit again after Taraweeh, so you can make your Taraweeh properly without any interruption. Yeah? Inshallah. I know the samosa though. I know, man. They, they're tempting. They look at you. So now this is here. So imagine people who from, I don't know, from different parts of the world, they put their, their food in there. Or maybe the, uh, the neighbor has passed by and then they give you some food. And then, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that was back in Mauritius when I was in Mauritius, you know, mashallah, like 25 years ago. You know, we would give our neighbors iftar, they would give us iftar. That would be nice. And in Marat, subhanAllah, you don't, have, you don't find this much. Anyway, I'm on you over here, or my neighbors, so you know what I'm trying to say. Anyway. Ah. The fifth one. It is soon now. Bring, listen, breaking brother, the brother, you okay to read? I don't want to make you read too much, and then you might. Nope. No problem, I can. Because I know you're fasting as well, because... No, fine, fine, fine. Well, Fifth one. It is sunnah when breaking the fast so to say what is narrated in the hadith. It is, it is to say bismillah. This is obligatory according to the correct view because the Prophet وسلم, enjoyed that. The words, Allahumma leka samdu ala azkike wa aftartu. Allahumma takabal minna innaka anta samiyu al-alim. O Allah, for you I have fasted and with your permission. I have broken by fast. O oh Allah, accept this fast from me. For you are the all hearing, all knowing. The weak and sta stated by the Ibn al qayyim there is, there is also another report. The Habba al-Sama wa Atala al-Uruk. Some names. The test is gone. The veins has been uh, moisted and the reward is assured if Allah wills. Now, very good. Shukran, shukran, shukran. Um, I know you're going to be looking for food now. You're like, Sheikh, made me read too much. Anyway, what I'm going to try to think is, uh, we spoke about that one uh, specifically today in, uh, in the clip that I sent in the group. And I hope that everyone over here is in the group uh, about the, 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 the sunnah manner of breaking and starting the fast, right? And uh, I hope that everyone has watched it. And if you have watched it, then I don't need to spend time on this slide. But just to make it quick, the, the way of breaking the fast is to say Bismillah, and then have your dates or a cup of water. Then you read this dua, this one here. This one is authentic, not that one. Not this one, okay? This one, all right? So, uh, let's say, yep. This is the one that we read. And this one is something that we do not read. Okay, so this is uh, weak. And this one is, so once we eat the day, we say Bismillah, we hear the Adhan, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You hear, you take a date and you eat. Oh, if some people want to drink water, no problem. If you want to drink tea, no problem. You want to, you know, eat your samosa, no problem. But then, and then you say, Dahab al dhamma Inshallah, and then you carry on your, your eating. This is the, the way of doing it. 
Ta'ala, which is the way of doing it in Allahi Ta'ala. Okay? Okay, inshallah, we will ask, let's say Bilal, Bilal David would like to drink, would like to, would like to, shukran ya, Thanks, uh, the brother who was reading Adil, thank you very much, shukran, shukran, barakallahu fiqh, yalla Bilal. The, the sunnah of fasting, there are a hadith which speak of virtue of the dua of the fasting person, such as the following, it was narrated from Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, three prayers are not rejected. The prayer of a father, the prayer of a fasting person, and the prayer of a traveler. The second one, it was narrated from Abu Umama in a Mar Marfu report, every time the fast is broken, Allah has people whom he ransoms. And the third one is, it was narrated from Abu Sa'id al-Kudri in al-Marfu, reported, Allah ransoms people every day and night. Example, in Ramadan and every day and night, the Muslim has a prayer that is answered. MashaAllah. Beautiful. Shukran. Afan. Look at the virtues of dua at the time of fasting. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, three prayers are not rejected. The prayer of a father, the prayer of a fasting person, and the prayer of a traveler. Okay? The three prayers are not rejected. But the prayer of a father, therefore all fathers out there, any dua that you make towards your son and your daughters are accepted. This is a a barakah that Allah Azza wa has given you. And is there in another hadith, the prayer of the mother, yeah, sorry, mothers, you know, you're coming as well. You're like, why the Prophet has only father? What did the father know about kids? But you know, no, there's another hadith that says uh, the, the, the dua of the mother, yeah, to their kids are not rejected, especially the dua of the mother to their kids are not rejected. Therefore, and guess what? These du'a are either good or bad du'a. Yeah? If ever you make du'a against your kids, you curse your kids, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to accept it. If ever you make du'a for your kids, Allah will accept it. If you make dua against your kids, Allah will accept it. Therefore, the dua that come outside the mouth of a parent has to be very, very careful. And I know people who have actually made dua against their kids, and it did happen. It did happen. I remember there was once a mother told one of, the, one of her child, you will burn. And if then eventually she was burned. Something happened and then something got exploded, she was burned. Uh, something happened to one of the guy in Saudi The mother just said, you go there, your hand will break. Fa'lan, he went outside, he went on the bicycle, he fell down, his, his, hand, his hand broke. But no matter what we say to the kids, my brothers and sisters out there, if we are parents, then we always have to say khair for them. Even though we are upset at them, never give them, like how you say in Urdu, but dua. Never give them any kind of dua that may go against them. How many times we parents, out of anger, we say things what's not supposed to be said, and then we regret after. It can even lead to death. You know, the kids are fitna for us. The kids is, is a test for us. You know, how, how we make the tarbiyah, yeah, we're going to be responsible. It's a ni'mah to have them. And at the same time, it's a ni'mah. It's a test. Therefore, we should not lose that test. We should not fail that test. Therefore, you know, Allah has given them to us as an amana. We take very good care of the kids. Always make dua for them. No matter how disobedient they are for you. 
always ask Allah for their hidayah. Always ask Allah for their guidance. All right? Never ever ask dua against your kids because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And it's been there and I've seen people, I know that, and I know that people who have done it. So be very careful, my brothers and sisters out there. The prayer of a fasting person. So by the time you start fasting from Fajr until Maghrib, whatever dua you make is accepted. So you are fasting, you are praying in sujood, you make dua, your dua are accepted. You're going, you're going to your work while you are fasting, you're driving, you make dua, it is accepted. Before you take a nap while you are, while you are fasting, you make some dua, it is accepted. Before salah, before salah, after salah, before iftar, your dua are accepted. That does not happen any other time except in Ramadan. So this is something that worth uh, taking good advantage of. Make dua, my brothers and sisters. And the prayer of a traveler, of course, a musafir. A musafir, his dua is accepted. A musafir, dua is accepted. Someone who is on a travel. Someone who is on a travel. So you see someone uh, who is a traveler, maybe on the plane. Make dua on the plane because they're a traveler. You may transit from one place to the other. When you're on your transit, it's ibadah. Make dua. Uh, Allah Azza wa will accept your dua. If you're gone on a, if you're gone on a, uh, on a place as a tourist, make dua. You're a traveler. As long as you're a traveler, your dua is accepted. Ah, so now, even people who are, you know, you get, even people who are always on the plane and the flight and, uh, the dua that they make, they should always be indulged in making dua. They are on the fl they are flying here and there. Always make dua because your dua is accepted. Yeah? The Prophet وسلم, said, every time the fast is broken, Allah ransoms some people. So whenever you're breaking your fast, like now, now you are going to, uh, you are going to, uh, Break your fast, right? And at that moment, you're breaking your fast. Allah is removing people. Allah is removing people from hellfire. Yeah. So, at that moment, at that moment, make dua. Yeah. So it is a time where you make dua, not for you, for everyone. For everyone. So. That is why it is uh, very, very important to make dua at that moment. At that moment, Allah removed people from hellfire, and it is the time that we need to make dua before we break our fast. I know by that time, you, you, you know, you're getting that smell of the food and everything. It does, it does have an effect, an effect on your dua, but it's okay. Just no worries about the, the smell of the food. Just carry on, make your dua ta'ala. This happened to me. Maybe it didn't happen to you guys. So. Sometimes I had to go in the room to make dua because, you know, you can't make dua at the table. Your eyes are like, what you're going to eat? Yeah. So, the third one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ransom people every day and night. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove people from, from Jahannam every day and night. Yeah. And this happened in every day. And at the same time, our dua are accepted in Ramadan every time. I just had to mute. You guys got any question? Yeah. Great. This is in regards to. Uh, the before breaking of the fast, insha'Allah. Permissible act of fasting. Permissible act of fasting, which may be a uh, little bit interesting, insha'Allah. What other thing that we're able to do? Yalla Bilal. All right. Permissible acts of fasting. There are some actions that are permissible to do while fasting, which will not nullify the fast. For example, taking a shower. 
It is permissible to take a shower for any reason if you are showering due to thirst or being overheated. You know the Prophet, shukran. You know the Prophet Muhammad okay. sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you know that in Ramadan, he used to put water on his head? Ajib, huh? So I get questions sometimes. Sheikh, is it allowed for me to take a shower while I'm fasting? Is it allowed for me to, to wet my hair while I'm fasting? Of course. And Nabi Sallallahu in order to freshen himself, he used to pour water on his head when he was fasting. Look how it used to be hot back days. But it's okay to take a shower while you are fasting. And Karen Bilal? Rinsing the mouth and nose. It is permissible to rinse the mouth and nose without exaggeration. Using too much water may cause you to swallow the water, which may invalidate your fat. It is okay to rinse the mouth and nose, like how we do in wudu. So you can rinse your mouth, you can rinse your nose, but do not do it with exaggeration. Don't put too much in there. When you put too much water in your mouth and your nose, when you inhale them, there's a big chance it might go on your, in your throat. And when it goes in your throat, it might break the fast. But if you've done it by just gargling and thing and uh, put water in your nose, and by mistake it's gone in your throat, it does not affect your fast, inshallah. So in general, rinsing the mouth and nose does not invalidate your fast, and you can do that. Carry on. I applying eyeliner or eye drops. It is permissible to apply cool eyeliner or eye drops or anything else to the eyes, even if some taste from it finds its way to the throat. All right. It is permissible to wear the kuhul. Kuhul was an eyeliner. <laughs> kuhul is, uh, is something that the Prophet Muhammad and the Sahaba used to wear uh, in their eyes, which means like in Urdu they call it surma or in Arabic they call it kuhul. In English they call it eyeliner. They call it, I forgot. Anyway, um, it, is a, it is a powder. The origin of it, yeah, it's called ithmid. The, the origin of it is that you put it on your eyes over here, and it is good, according to Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah, Ibn Qayyim as well, Ibn Qayyim al Jawziya, it, it is something that actually helps your eyesight. The kuhul, ithmid, actually help your eyesight. But I'm not talking about the eyeliner that the sister wear, go all the way here. I'm not talking about this one. This one you can wear. I'm talking about the, 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 the kuhul, kuhul the, um, the powder that they put on your eyes, which, is, which helps for your eyesight uh, to make it better. Allah ta'ala a'lam. And eye drops can be worn as well. You can wear your eye drops as well as eardrops, yeah? Even eardrops. Uh, I can I can uh, add that here. I would add. So eye drops and eardrops can be applied, can be uh, can be used as well because it does not go through your throat. But can we use nose drops? No, because nose drop when you put it in there, it goes through your throat. So therefore, where uh, using nose drops. While you're fasting, does uh, nullify your fast as compared to eye drops and ear drops, does not nullify your fast, inshallah. Carry on, Bilal. All right, and taking injections. It is also permissible to take injections for medical purposes. There is no text that proves this invalidates the fast. Mm. Taking injections for medical purposes. There are two kinds of injections. Oh, I can't tell what I know. Guess what? I've seen a doctor here on my days. Anyway, there are medical purposes for as injections, and then we have one as nutritional purposes, injection. Therefore, any injection for medical purposes, maybe for your visa, or maybe you want to do something medically, you want to do a, an injection, including the COVID uh, vaccination, all these, it is permissible, including the insulin including the insulin it is permissible for you to do to use while you are instead of fasting and it does not invalidate your fast Allah taking a shower 
rinsing the mouth and nose, applying to her and taking injections. These are permissible acts to do while you are fasting. Uh oh, we got some more here. Man, okay, accidental consumption. Your fast will not become invalid if you consume something that you could not protect your, yourself from. For example, swallowing your saliva or accidentally swallowing dust or sifted flour, flour that has accidentally entered your mouth. Accidental consumption. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I sent that in the group as well, that whoever has eaten accidentally Whoever has eaten accidentally or drank accidentally or forgetfully, then he may carry on his fast. For verily, it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has fed him. For verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has fed him. Therefore, uh, swallowing your saliva uh, accidentally, uh, maybe by mistake or forcefully, or you forgetfully, you ate, you drank a cup of water or a sip of water, and then you never knew by the time you remember, you, you spit whatever you've got in your mouth and you carry on your fasting, inshallah. Tasting food with the tongue. Your fast will be valid even if you taste food with your tongue or use toothpaste or mouthwash as long as nothing is swallowed. Okay. Tasting food, of course, with the tongue. I don't know why I put here with the tongue. Anyway, you taste food with the tongue. Said I am. <laughs> we taste food with the tongue, man. Anyway, tasting food. So, your fast will be valid even if you taste food. Even tasting food. Sorry for that. Sometimes our English is not that good. We try to be good in English, but anyway. Your fast will be valid even if you taste food. Or use toothpaste or mouthwash as long as nothing is swallowed. Let me tell you something. If you want to taste food, the taste bud is here at the tip of your tongue, right? So the taste bud, your taste bud is here at the tip of your tongue. Therefore, in order for your husband not to tell you anything at the iftar table, you can actually taste the food, no problem. Because you don't want to put food down there and there's too much salt or there's no salt at all. Therefore, you can, you can taste the, the food, little bit on your tongue and spit it out. So you already got the taste. The taste didn't have to go. You know, subhanAllah, the tongue, the tongue how Allah has made it got different compartments in there where you can actually, where the heat, where you feel cold, where you feel hot, you know, where you feel the taste, where you don't feel the taste. Allah Azzawajal has made that tongue in such a different way. One day, inshallah, we can go through the tongue. But anyway, what we want to say is your taste bud at the tip of your tongue. So you don't need to have a full cup of water to taste the water or taste the tea or whatever. Uh, you just need to put it at the tip of your tongue. It's sweet or it's not sweet. It's salty. It's bitter. Who spit it out and then you will know how it tastes. This does not break your fast. As well as toothpaste does not break your fast. And using mouthwash does not break your fast. Brothers and sisters out there, we cannot say something is haram until we have a proof from the Quran and the Sunnah and the consensus of the ulama that says it is haram. There are people out there who like to make the deen hard. There are people out there who make the religion hard. Everything is haram for them. That is not Islam. Islam, everything is halal except what Allah and the Prophet has made haram. And it's just handful. You know, the qaida of Islam, everything is halal. Except what Allah and the Prophet has made haram and it's just a handful. SubhanAllah. But people make it different. In this, they say in Islam, everything is haram, except few things which is halal. No, 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 no. La wallahi. Islam is such an easy religion, but you need to learn it. You need to study it for you to feel the sweetness of Islam. Yeah? So this is how it is. Karim Bilal? Breathing in different scents. All right. Breathing in different scents. Uh, uh, we know people want to wear perfumes. People ask me, Sheikh, can we wear perfume? Of course you can wear perfume. I mean, didn't we say in the beginning that the conditions of your fast is your intention 
and to abstain from food and drink between Fajr and Maghrib. Perfume got nothing to do in there. Perfume does not go through your throat. Why would people say that applying kuhul is not allowed? You're not allowed to, you're not allowed to uh, wear perfume. You're not allowed to cut your hair. You're not allowed to cut your nail. All these are innovation. All these got no proof whatsoever. So whatever, whatever we, uh, whatever we say here, it's all authentic and according to the uh, consensus of the early predecessors. So breathing different scents does not break your fast. But the one thing here, though, is that you know inhaling a lot of bakhur, you know bakhur, what people put bakhur, inhaling that a lot might affect your fast. Therefore, when you're fasting, stay away from bakhur. Don't put too much bakhur because the bakhur goes through your throat, through your nose. Inhale it. So stay away from bakhur. It is the the thing that you put in the charcoal. Uh, I can put here breathing different scents. I say cutting the hair and nails. Yeah, all these are permissible. Karam Bilal? Kissing and embracing one's uh, spouse. It is permissible to kiss and embrace your spouse as long as one is able to control oneself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying not to laugh. Yeah, anyway, <clears throat> this is something that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would do. And Nabi Sallallahu it is reported that before he would go for Salah, he would kiss his wife and go for Salah. And some of the narrations say that. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would kiss his wife even during Siyam. Yeah? So this is something that it is permissible, permissible to do. So uh, if you're able to control yourself, there's no, no problem in kissing your wife. If you're going to work, if you're going to, if you're going to, uh, you're going to the masjid, or you come back, maybe you came back from a from a travel. You you know, it's a way of showing affection. It's okay as long as you can control yourself. There's no problem in that. You want to embrace your spouse. You want to kiss your mother. You want to kiss your dad. You want to hug your mom. No problem. Inshallah, there is no problem in this. Carry on. Drawing blood. It is also permissible to draw blood in any amount for any reason. If drawing blood weakens the person, it will be considered a disliked action. Drawing out blood, including hijama. Oh, going and, 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 and give out blood to people. For example, unless, let me tell you something. It is permissible to donate blood. Yeah? Yeah. But this one, this one is a little bit of a debatable from the scholars. You know, does it take the same ruling as cupping or no? Some ulama says cupping break the fast. Some ulama says cupping does not break the fast because the Prophet Muhammad them, he said that the one who do the cupping, they have broken their fast. But the Prophet himself, he made cupping while he was fasting. Anyway, if ever you want, it's, it's, if it happens that you have to take out blood for medical reason, it's okay. It does not break your fast. If you need that, for example, someone is in is in need of your blood, you have to donate blood because you're A plus B plus C minus. I don't, then you have to go and give it, and it does not break your fast. And the last one, being in, being in a state of no, one minute. Yeah, go on. Being in a state of Janaba, your fast will still be valid even if you find yourself in a state of Janaba a major ritual impurity uh, after Fajr, dawn has arrived. Ghusl, a full bath, can still be performed once the time of Fajr has begun. Very good, shukran. This is in Fine. regard to the state of Janaba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, I'm gonna end with this one. Allah says, أُحِنَّ لَكُمْ لَيْلَةَ الصِّيَامِ الرَّفَثُ إِلَىٰ نِسَائِكُمْ هُنَّ لِبَاسٌ لَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لِبَاسٌ لَهُنَّ Back in the days in Ramadan, when they would fast, they would stay away from their wives. They would stay away from their wives. But then later, Allah Azza wa changed that. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told the Muslim, "Hunna libasunakum wa antum libasunahunna." Your wife and your husband, you're like you're like clothes. You know, you're like clothes for them. You know, clothes which mean like you know next to each other. You need each other. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has created man and woman, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has put. Uh, biological needs in between them. Therefore, in the month of Ramadan, during the day, it is haram. 
for the husband and wife to satisfy the biological needs. Whereas during the night, it is halal for them. Therefore, if ever a husband and the wife has satisfied the biological needs during the night, and then Fajr came in and they haven't done Ghusl yet, does that mean they can't fast? No, it means they can fast. They are able to fast, they should fast. Even the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, entered uh, Fajr, Adhan al Fajr, while he went to state of Janaba. He made his ghusl and then he went to pray. Therefore, you do not have to be in a state of purity for you to start your fast. Therefore, some people better, they like to make ghusl before suhoor, it is okay. But if ever that you woke up late or you don't have time to make ghusl or whatever, and it is okay, it does not break your fast. Whoa, it's 6.10. And I know people in the Marad are like, Sheikh, it's time to go. Anyway, let me just, if, 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 if you guys have to go, you may, you may leave. Yeah, we don't want, you know what I'm saying? Especially when it comes to iftar time. Like this Sheikh, man, he made his lecture that iftar time. Subhanallah, I had no choice. Anyway, let me just check the question. I'm taking the pain in a few hours, inshallah. Oh, okay, no, that's not a question. <laughs> Just wanted to check if we follow. All right. Is that true that we don't take extra salah with ourselves? Okay, first question over here. Uh, okay, Sheikh, after applying nail polish, can we? <laughs> you sound like my sister now. Can we? <laughs> after applying nail polish, can we make wudu? No, you can't. <laughs> You have once once you wear nail polish, it prevents water to go through your nail. You can you can make wudu and then apply nail polish if you're in the house. Yeah, or you're gonna wear that for your husband. But if you have nail polish on, you have to remove it and then you make wudu because your nail has to be uh, without any kind of nail polish for the water to go through. All right. Question number one. All right, carry on. Uh, what about putting your hand on top of each other when you pray? Uh, when you no, when you pray, when you pray, you put your hand on each other, like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. I put it here. He said, when after takbir, he will put his left hand, left hand on his chest, and the right hand on his left hand, like this. Yeah, like this. His left hand on his chest and the right hand on his hand. And then he would say, he would read the Surah Al-Fatiha. Okay, Sana. And then we have, just wanted to check if we follow or not. Uh, is it true that we don't do extra Salat Al-Asr? Yeah, after Salat Al-Asr, there is no prayer. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is no prayer after Fajr until sunrise and there is no prayer after Asr until sunset. Sheikh, even while traveling in car, does our dua get accepted? If you are, no. If you, that means if you're traveling from one place to the other and you are uh, in Dubai or in your resident place, you're not a traveler. You're just a driver. <laughs> Yeah, in that case, if ever you are traveling in the resident area, you're not a traveler. A traveler is someone who leaves the resident area. You know what I'm saying? A traveler is someone who has left their residency area, they've gone outside. Yeah, so if someone, if you are in your resident area and then you're driving your car, you're not a traveler, you're just a driver. Sheikh, while making dua, if I swallow tears, did it break my fast? No. Try not to swallow your tears when you break, when you make dua, because uh, you know the the tears fall down, and then you can sweep them. And uh, before the tears actually get through your mouth, it, it can actually be swept away. And if ever that has gone through your throat, no, it does not break your fast. Inshallah. Uh, 
Uh, but Sheikh, a woman is not supposed to wear perfume. No, a woman is allowed to wear perfume in the house. A woman is allowed to wear perfume in the house. A woman is allowed to wear nail polish in the house. No problem. We don't want to, we don't want, if the ladies wants to wear perfume, they want to wear whatever they want to wear in the house, as long as they are around the mahram in the house, they can do whatever they want. They can wear the perfume, they can wear the nail polish, they can wear whatever they want to wear, as long as they are in the house in front of the mahram, no problem. Once they go outside, then they have to put the Islamic attire on, and of course, no perfume. Sheikh, is it true that we should change our spot after praying Fadl Salat to pray Sunnah? Or is Dikr sufficient not to change? Look, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not join two prayer on the same spot. Yeah? Do not join two prayer. Therefore, after your Fadl, yeah, either, either you change your place, yeah, or you talk with someone. But it tells you that you have not joined the two prayer. So some people, after Fard, what do they do? Straight away, they get up, they pray Sunnah. No, no, no. After Fard, sit down, major adkar, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha ayatul kursi, yeah? And then you get up, you change the, the place. Or if there's no place to change, you can pray there, no problem, just a Sunnah act. Why? Another reason as well, the ulama says, because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the anyam al qiyamah, the places where you pray is going to talk. On Yom al qiyamah the place where you, where you used to pray is going to be witness for you. Yeah? So it's good where you change places uh, and places whenever you pray. Sheikh, is it true? Okay, I read this one. Sheikh, can I be added to the group? Uh, okay, yes, you can be added to the group. I put my phone number in now. Whoever would like to be added in the group. Okay, I put my phone number here. Whoever would like to be added in the group. Uh, 5040, And let me know your name. And then so I can, in which group I put you, or male or female group, all right? This is my... Uh, Uh, this is, uh, you just, just text me on a WhatsApp and tell me your name. Uh, tell me, no, you, you just text me and then you tell me your name and then I will put you in the group. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Salam alaikum. Can the first two rakat al be considered as a Yes. Especially nowadays. You know, we can make it sometime in some ibadah, which is sunnah and sunnah. We can make, we can combine the intention. Therefore, if ever the tarawih is started, yeah, and then you haven't done the two sunnah, you can make the two intention in one. The two intention in one. Therefore, after salat al fard, the imam is the tarawih prayer, and you got no time to do it. So the first two rakat tarawih is the tarawih and the sunnah mu'akkada as well. Bi idnillah ta'ala, no problem in this one, inshallah. Okay, and I think, inshallah, we've done a little bit, uh, spoken a lot today, and thank you very much. Jazakallah khair ya Bilal, Jazakallah khair ya Barakallah Fiq, and the other brothers as well, I forgot his name. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless you all, and shukran for helping us and assist us in your re beautiful reading, and inshallah, we got some time. I know people from different world out here. So as for those in the UAE, you need to get ready for your iftar. And anyway, what you're gonna get ready for iftar? Just have a date in the water, man. I just said, halas. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you got no question. You got no question. Anyone? You guys I have, have a question. Go on, Bilal. So um, I have like a skin irritation, so I was um, cutting my beard down, um, but inshallah, I'm going to try to grow it back um, some more. Is that is, during the month of Ramadan, should you definitely try to grow your beard and, tr and try to refrain from cutting your beard as much as possible? Look, when it comes to the rule and regulation in Islam, 
Ramadan is the month in which where you get the opportunity to start something and you carry on. It's not something that you, uh, uh, you start something just for Ramadan and then we stop. Like for example, the Qira'ah of the Quran. We're not meant to read only in Ramadan. Meant to read, start in Ramadan and carry on after Ramadan. The hijab that we wear. You see many sisters, mashallah, you know, they're coming to work with the hijab now. Oh, no, no. Oh, oh, it's Ramadan. But wait, sister, you know, let me tell you something. It's not only in Ramadan you're supposed to wear your, your hijab. And guess what? After Eid, you could see, no, you could see, subhanallah. No, you wait in Ramadan and carry on after Ramadan. It becomes easy in Ramadan because shaitan is not there. You're able to wear it. <clears throat> then after Ramadan, carry on. Carry on. So this one is in regards to your hijab. This one in regards to your abaya. This one in regards to your beard. This one in regards to your salah. In regards to your sadaqah. In regards to everything. It's meant to be done. Okay, it's not meant, it's meant to be done the whole year. But Ramadan is the time for you to start doing it because shaitan is not there to stop you. You understand? So the beard is something knowing in general the ruling of beard is that it is not permissible to shave it, but you can keep it, you can trim it. That's okay. That's my opinion. There are different opinions of the beard. There are some ulama that says you have to, you have to, you have to leave it, you can't cut it. Some scholars they 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 understand the hadith in a different way in linguistic in a linguistic manner that no, you should not shave it, but you can keep it and trim it, you know. And I am for the I am for the opinion of. You keep it, but you can trim it, you know what I'm saying? You can keep it, you know, nice and clean, but shaving is not permissible. Shaving is not permissible. And something that you might be irritated, uh, something like that, but for by the sake of Allah, do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will make it easy for you, inshallah. You can keep mm -hmm. it, you can Allah. keep it number three, four, five, yeah, and then you can shave it. Trust me, makes you look beautiful. Allah will make it easy. Inshallah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it is a fitra of man. Uh, salam, Sheikh. Uh, if you may get a severe headache, migraine while fasting, is it permissible to break your fast to eat the medicine? Look, if you have a severe headache and then you're not able to walk and that's going to affect your head and you really need to eat something, then you break your fast. Hey, then you break your fast. Then you take the 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 ruling of of of, of those who are sick. Those people who are uh, sick. Oh, the people who are not able to. So in that case, if you really, really can't, if you, I'm saying if you really, 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 really can't, then you break your fast. But don't make it look like oh, I've got a headache and I need to break my fast. No, because I know sometimes headache gets very severe. It feels like your head is exploding and you really need to have a, a medicine. In that case, yeah, break your fast and then you replace that fast, inshallah, after Ramadan. Okay, inshallah. Uh, Bilal, I don't know if you're in the group or no. You can just. Uh, yes, I'm in the group. Sorry, I was late. So. Okay, no problem. Uh, khair, inshallah. Uh, my next uh, session, we will inform you, bi ta'ala, when we're going to do it, inshallah. Uh, sure. And we'll be in touch with from the group and keep following. And until then, and and this, go on, go on. Uh, and this Thursday, you are giving a, a, a Thursday night talk, inshallah. The what time? The five o'clock one? A Thursday night. I don't know. There's a flyer going around that says Thursday night. Um, you are doing something. Uh, mm, let me. I don't is, know. I don't okay. know. I'm, no, oh. not whatever I'm aware of. Maybe okay. something, have, maybe something okay. has already put me somewhere. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> this is it. Now we have, we have, we have it every day. Every day we have lectures from different, uh, different platform. Yesterday we had from before yesterday we had in uh, from the UK. And then yesterday we had from Canada. Today we had from Dubai, and then I had from Mauritius as well. And every day we'll be able to to give some. Uh, some lectures somewhere so people can benefit inshallah so inshallah. i don't know where there was going to be and i hope that inshallah accept that from us and i hope that we made it easy for everyone and inshallah 
we will maybe one day we can see each other one day for everyone until then we i got a question uh please can you tell the hustle of the period and fasting uh, um someone asked a question uh the whistle of the periods and fasting so when someone uh the, the whistle of the periods uh the when someone when lady uh, had actually got the signs of tohur. The signs of tohur means the sign of purity. You know, when the sisters have actually finished their menstruation, you know, either they get the white discharge or they have gone for a long while dryness, then in that case, they know that they are, they are pure. At that moment, they go and take a ghusl. Which ghusl? It's a normal ghusl, which means like how the Prophet Muhammad has taught us, for both male and female, they do the same way, which is to wash the hand first, and then you wash the private part, the front side and the back side, and then you perform ablution, ablution, full, full ablution, and then you wash your body right side and then left side, and then your whole body, use the shampoo and whatever, try not to touch your private part again, and then you finish it, wash your feet, and then you have done your ghusl. This is the way of making ghusl in is in the light of Islam for both male and female. No difference, they're both the same way and we have two hadith about ghusl, one from Umm Salama and one from Aisha and they're both the same almost Okay, inshallah, we'll meet some new time, some time until then. Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Wa Alaikum Wa Alaikum and if ever, if ever today, I'll be praying in uh, Marquez al Manar. Uh, if the boys, the men here would like to join us, uh, and inshallah, it might be live on the group on YouTube as well. So the link will be sent inshallah before, uh, maybe before uh, Taraweeh. You guys can click on it, you'll be able to see the Taraweeh inshallah today. And in the night, ta'ala, see you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If not,